Hey y'all, here we are with the new Ruger built Marlin 1895 Trapper. Chambered in 4570 government. The only government I really trust. How does it stack up to the old Remington built Marlins? Well, stick around because we're fitting to find out. So we got this rifle from Ruger a few months ago, and within that time, we've got about 300 rounds downrange from some 405 grain double tap, Hornaday Lever Revolution, Winchester Federal, and even some homegrown 430 grain home cast reloads that are subsonic that we're gonna talk about here in a minute. First impressions, initial impressions, as compared to the Remington built Marlin, which I reviewed a while back, Right out of the box, the first thing I noticed, the action seemed a lot slicker. Now, the old Marlins were not bad, don't get me wrong, but this rifle, it feels a touch more refined. It does have nicer furniture. It's got a laminate stock and fore-end here, and the fore-end is also a little thinner than what Remington Marlin provided you with. So it's all over a little more refined, a little nicer looking. But one of the things that piqued my interest the most is Ruger had the forethought to thread this barrel 11 16 by 24. So this little five plus one lever gun, it's got a threaded barrel. And y'all know what that means. We're gonna put a can on it. And that's what we did. Uh, as a matter of fact, we used two different cans. Here they sit. This is the Liberty Suppressor's Goliath and the Phoenix Weaponry's 4570 silencer. Took it out to 100 yards, shot some groups with it. It was averaged at about four inches, with the best group of the day being with the double tap 405 grain. Now that is with these wonderful Skinner sights. I really do like these Skinner sights. They are adjustable for elevation and windage on this rear peep sight. And you got this front sight with a beautiful white line here that allows you to index really well when you're centering, centering that front sight with the rear aperture. And this rear aperture is two piece. So you have a little black insert here that threads out. Don't lose that Hunter, we'd never find that in the grass. And that actually opens the aperture up a lot wider. So if you were looking for some more close range shooting or you wanted a wider, almost ghost ring, you've got a couple different options with these really nice Skinner sights. As always, the rifle is clear. Still, the muzzle pointed downrange in a safe direction. The trigger pull is really nice. It has a little bit of take up here, and then it breaks really clean just under five pounds, which in my mind for a factory lever gun, that's better than ideal. And if you're used to the old style Marlins with the cross bolt type safety, well, still a feature right here. So not a whole lot as far as the manual of arms has changed, but a whole lot of little things, a whole lot of minor improvements have gone into this rifle to, in my opinion, make it superior to what Remington was building. And I hate to say that because I really did like that old Remington built Marlin, but Ruger took the ball and they ran with it. And to use a really tired old cliche, made a touchdown. 4570, we all know, started its life as a black powder cartridge. It is a 45 caliber, 70 grains of black powder was that standard government load. Now that we've got modern metallurgy and modern smokeless powders and modern bullets, the 4570 is vastly approved upon when it was first introduced. But now back to the subsonic stuff. So I started doing some experimenting. I went down to old 1911 Tuner's house and. He, uh, he, he loaned me, he extended loaned me an RCBS bullet mold and 458, or I'm sizing to actually 459. It's coming out of the mold, cast, lubed, gas checked at 430 grains. Started loading that with 11 grains of unique pistol powder, and then we had a subsonic round.
I had plenty of shorts that I've done with this rifle already with the subsonic stuff. They will be linked in the rangehot.com review written article as well as I'll have some in the description below. That's what I really enjoyed most about this rifle was being able to shoot hearing safe subsonic 430 grain bullets still traveling right around a thousand feet a second which if my math is right that's making just under a thousand foot pounds of energy which is still that's that's big medicine y'all out to probably 50 yards for two and four-legged critters now we did shoot the, the the subsonic stuff out at 100 yards and unfortunately when we had a hundred yard zero with supersonic ammunition we could actually see that bullet hitting the deck in front of the targets about 15 feet so it is it's kind of lobbing them in there, but out at about 50 yards, it was pretty much point of aim, point of impact, minute a bad guy as compared to the supersonic. And here again, I'm gonna relate a lot of that to these really nice Skinner sights. All the details on this rifle, I'm gonna have in the written article. So if you feel like I went over something too fast or I glossed over a feature of the rifle, hey, don't sweat it y'all. I'm gonna link to the written article below. Jump over there, read that article. If you feel like then I missed something, I dropped the ball, hey, that's why we got a comment section, man. Shoot me an email, find me on, well, Twitter still. I think I think social media still let me have a little bit of a presence. But, uh, you know, we got the YouTube channel here with a comment section. You can always email me, that sort of thing. Let me know what you think, good, bad, right, or wrong. I really like the feedback. That's really about all I got. So I'm going to summarize as compared to the old Remington Milk Marlin. It's a better rifle really is and a more attractive rifle so way to go ruger think y'all did fine on this and there you go so i hope y'all are doing well Want you take care of yourselves and each other i look forward to seeing you at the range